It is very important to have good grip and bridge technique. The grip and bridge are the only connections you have to the cue, and they are solely responsible for the outcome of every shot. The bridge provides the line of aim and stability for the cue, and the grip delivers the cue to the cue ball and provides control. In this video, we present technique advice that will help you ensure your grip and bridge provide reliable, consistent, and accurate cue motion for all types of shots. Let's start with the grip. Your grip on the cue should be natural and relaxed. One way to find a good starting position for the grip is to simply pick up the cue and wiggle the arm and wrist into a relaxed, straight down position. Where you place your grip on the cue will vary with your stance. The grip should be in the position that orients the forearm perpendicular to the cue. With a shorter bridge length, your grip will need to be farther up. And with a longer bridge length, your grip will be farther back. Again, the main point is to have the forearm perpendicular to the cue. The grip should also hang straight down beneath the elbow with the entire arm in the plane of the cue, and it should remain this way during the entire stroking motion. The grip should be a light cradle that's relaxed enough to allow the cue to pivot within the hand during the stroking motion. The fulcrum for the pivot will typically be either at the index finger or the middle finger. The fulcrum finger, in this case the index finger, remains closed around the cue with light pressure. The thumb helps provide support on the side of the cue. The other fingers lightly wrap around and move with the cue. Be sure to keep the grip relaxed during the entire stroke. Tightening the grip will adversely affect your control, consistency, and tip position accuracy on the cue ball. Now let's look at the bridge. The purpose for the bridge is to provide a stable guide for the cue along the desired line of aim of the shot at the desired tip position on the cue ball. Shown here is a standard open or V bridge with spread fingers. With this bridge, you rest the thumb up against the index finger to form a V groove for the cue. Notice how the heel of the hand is firmly on the table and the fingers are spread for extra support. You don't want your thumb away from the hand as shown here. This causes the cue to slide on the fleshy part of the hand, which can be sticky and less stable. Again, you want a stable V formed by the thumb against the index finger with as little resistance as possible. One advantage of an open bridge is that you have full view of the cue, even when your stance is low. This can make aiming and sighting easier than with a closed bridge, where part of the cue is blocked from view. Another advantage of an open bridge is the V forms a centered and free sliding support even when the cue's taper enters the bridge. With a closed bridge, if the bridge length is long or the taper starts soon on the shaft, more resistance and spreading can occur during the stroke. Let's take a closer look at the closed bridge, which is commonly used. Notice how the index finger forms a closed loop against the thumb. The index finger can be bent completely around the cue or can be flexed against the thumb or middle finger. The middle finger provides the main support beneath the cue. The result is a very stable guide during the stroke. You want to make sure there are no gaps between the cue and the index finger loop. This can result in undesirable cue motion during the stroke. You also want to make sure you don't apply too much pressure with the loop. This will constrain the cue's motion too much and reduce control. Again, you want a closed loop forming a stable guide without too much resistance. There are many bridge variations and alternatives. Here are some examples. The ones you should use are the ones that are the most stable, comfortable, and consistent for you. Here they are from the side. Notice how the heel of the hand is always planted firmly against the table. The fingers also help provide stability where possible. The heel of the hand is off the table only at steep cue angles. Here's an example where elevation is required to clear over an obstacle ball. An open bridge can easily be adjusted to create different tip positions and cue elevations. The bridge height is increased by first lifting the knuckles and then by lifting the heel of the hand. A closed bridge can also be elevated, but it can't get as high as the open bridge. When shooting over a rail at a nearby cue ball, there are several rail bridge alternatives. The most common is formed like so. You rest the thumb against the cue and straddle with the first two fingers. This results in a very stable guide against the rail cushion. Here are some alternative rail bridges useful in different situations. 
And this is what they look like from the side. Here are some example bridges useful when bridging along a cushion. And this is what they look like from the side. When the cue ball is too far to reach comfortably with a hand bridge, you can use a mechanical bridge. The grip used is a dart style grip formed by the thumb and first two fingers. The elbow can be held out to the side or hang straight down. The free hand should hold the bridge down firmly and help clear the bridge away from moving balls when necessary. A mechanical bridge usually offers guides on the small side, allowing an elevated bridge, for example to clear over an obstacle ball.